Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to grab a scalpel, dig deep in the No Man's Sky, and find out what went wrong. How did No Man's Sky fail after a three-year-long development and marketing cycle? How did it come to this? How did we get here? I think I have a good idea. And then, the next piece of the conversation is, can this game be saved? Can Hello Games be trusted in the future? How can they earn all of this back? And how can No Man's Sky go on to be what everybody hoped it would be? So first, I think the biggest part that we really need to talk about is the marketing strategy for No Man's Sky. Sean went into marketing and talking about No Man's Sky with a very bold approach that very much leaned on riding on a lot of success or riding on the success, which means everything that he hyped up and he had a lot of hype surrounding this game. It was very deliberately so that it leaned on actually executing and fulfilling the promise that that marketing strategy entailed. Sean was very secretive about what this game contained. He gave us a few bullet points. It's a science fiction exploration game. There are planets, there are galaxies or galaxy. You need to get to the center of the universe, etc., etc. But in all of that marketing, there was very little substantial information about what gamers would actually do, which actually created the question. Question, the question that you heard ad nauseum sometimes on the internet, on podcast, and other various channels around YouTube saying, what do you do in No Man's Sky? And hindsight being 2020, you look back and some of those folks are probably actually feeling kind of vindicated right now. Maybe kind of, maybe kind of reasonably vindicated because the information was mostly there. But this bold approach of marketing No Man's Sky with a very secretive delivery of information really, again, leaned on being successful. It leaned on properly and completely executing on the ideas and the wonder that the game produced during its hype cycle. Another thing that I think No Man's Sky and Hello Games did wrong was the AAA price and the AAA promise. Now, I have been attacked before on this channel when I defended the price of the game. And now I want to be clear that I did not defend the price so much as I defended the concept. I personally in my work life, I work in sales and a sales philosophy is is that the seller of the product gets to be the one that puts the price tag on the product. Now the customer is always going to try to talk you down and in certain industries this actually happens. The auto industry. ISP industry like internet and television providers where whereas other industries like gasoline you don't walk into a Walmart and say well this gallon of milk is cheaper at this other nondescript local gas or grocery store so you should lower that price they, they might just be like well go to that store so it depends on the industry you're in value is a very subjective thing some folks got their $60 worth out of it others may not have some folks picked it up for a few hours and like hmm, this is cool now it's boring my interest in it has hit the wall those are the folks that are telling you the game isn't worth the 60 price but i look back and say hmm was it worth 60 dollars to me yes i put so much time into it that at some point i have to say okay if i'm putting 200 if i'm putting 200 hours into this game maybe i got my money's worth but with the AAA promise Sean Murray and Hello Games really failed on their indie values. They spent so much time talking about how they're this tiny indie studio and they celebrated that. And the indie studios surrounding them celebrated that. Look at this indie studio doing this big thing that's so important that's going to be industry groundbreaking that ended up failing miserably when it launched. But when Sean Murray and Hello Games got into bed with Sony, really I feel like they're at the mercy of a publisher which to me sort of erased is the right that you have to brag about how indie you are and I think that did a whole lot more harm to them than good because really if I had to speculate this partnership with a publisher like Sony came with some demands and probably some hefty demands too with development cycles marketing requirements like not being able to mention the Xbox or the PC version timelines on when the game is supposed to be finished. All of this sounds like it comes from a publisher. There's no way that Hello Games would have pushed this game out as quickly as they did without Sony being involved going, yeah, we're over this. You need to put this game out now. You abandon your indie values. You abandon what indie luster you have the moment 
you become at the mercy of a publisher. So I believe that contributed to the downfall of the game. As far as missing features and things like that, you really have to think that this has to tie into it. The core AAA promise, the price, the time that it had to launch. You really have to wonder if the game didn't hit some kind of feature creep with its assets, the multiplayer, things like that. Maybe those things just weren't ready or they weren't fleshed out good enough. I can sit here and try to make excuses for them all day, but the thing is, it didn't happen. Those things didn't happen, and what we got was a base vanilla version of the game which killed all of the affirmation bullet points and which made the game actually inevitably fail. That's my call. That's how I see it. The bold approach for the marketing failed when it launched with missing features, missing communication, broken promises. And Peter Molyneux is probably sitting back in his house somewhere going, thanks, Sean. You took the heat off me, bro. I appreciate it. Nobody has to talk about me bad anymore because now you clearly have the spotlight. Nobody's going to go back and say, but Spore. Nobody's going to go back and say, Peter Molyneux. They're going to go back and say, No Man's Sky. They're going to say, Sean Murray. They're going to say, Hello Games. And that's just bad for the future. You really have to wonder if people will ever trust Sean Murray in Hello Games ever again because of the series of events. One of the biggest mistakes that I believe outside of the bold marketing approach and the breakdown with the relationship with Hello Games and Sony is their communication with their fan base and the people that were potentially going to buy this game, the folks that were interested in this game. Sean Murray and Hello Games were going dark way more than they were out talking to their customers. Outside of requirements like trade shows, E3, which was all well and good. It was so nice to see Sean Murray on stage at E3, not once, but twice. And that's excitement that many developers will never see ever with their games that they made is being on a big stage like a Sony stage to present their game. That's exposure you just can't get anywhere else. But as far as going dark, they have a bad habit of doing this and you really have to wonder why. Are they afraid of the crowd? Are they afraid of their fans? Are they afraid of criticism? Are they afraid of facing the music? Are they afraid of owning up to their mistakes? Now, I've heard people say, well, no matter what they say, they're gonna be met with vitriol anyway. That's true. But the fact of the matter is, is that you demanded $60 for a product that didn't deliver. You're right to be scared of the public. You just waived that. You no longer have any elbow room to say, but I'm scared and I don't wanna do it. Ownership is key here. Now, speaking of all of that, now we need to ask the question, can No Man's Sky be redeemed? Can it be saved? And really, this is gonna be a hard hill to climb. Now, DM21 Gaming brought up a really good point in one of their most recent videos. Uh, the video called No Man's Sky was a mistake. A bit of a hyperbolic title, but it's, I think it's worth a watch because they go into depth about sort of the history of failed games that actually came back to become successful. Uh, they highlighted Final Fantasy XIV and the atrocious launch that game had. Now we're talking a bit of a different game here. This game comes with a subscription model. It is a massively multiplayer online game. Now, of course you have to buy the box, but it also requires that you subscribe to it monthly. And that's a heavy demand to begin with. Not a lot of folks are cool with paying, they're not paying, they're not cool with paying monthly for a game. So you've got to get it right. That game launched riddled with bugs, terrible communication, confusing features, and all in all, just failed to impress on a critical level. So what they did, they owned it. They took ownership of it. They went back to the drawing board. They got rid of a lot of the staff. They brought on new staff, new directors, and they made things right. Look at Battlefield 4. That game launched horribly broken. Terrible servers, terrible features, bad performance, and EA and DICE spent more than a year getting that game back up to snuff, supporting it way longer than they would have normally done to get that game back into order and earning trust back. Now, Battlefield 4 now actually remains one of the best one of the best Battlefield games there is, even in spite of the bad launch that it had all the trust issues and broken promises and broken trust. You just cannot launch a game in such a broken state and expect your customers not to grill you for it. You have to do some work to bring all of that trust back. 
So how do you do that? A humble explanation and a humble apology. You have to come out, you have to be able to look these folks in the eye, and you have to be able to say something to them, explain to them what happened. Be honest, take some time to really let them know from your perspective, because right now, these angry people are creating the narrative for you. You don't want that. When I got angry at uh, Jason Schreier from Kotaku for leaking the delay of the game, I stated that it was okay sometimes to let the publisher or the developer be the ones to control the message. Because when that story leaked, it's really jarring for the folks that are scrambling to put together the real message and the real reason why for the debate. It just creates a lot of noise. It doesn't do very good for anybody other than you and the clicks that you got. So now that has to come back down to Sean. Sean has to be able to come out in public on some major show, like Jeff Keighley's show, for instance, or just make a video and put it on their YouTube channel and just say, here's what we goofed up. Here's what happened. Feature creep happened. We had a deadline and it wasn't ready. So we had to scrap a lot of things or remove a lot of things until we were ready to make it right. You can't make good on the idea that they're being ghost silent right now. It's not fair to the consumers. It's not fair to the game. It's not fair to the future of a wonderful studio. A studio I still think is great, can be great and will be great, hopefully if they can climb out of this hole but they need to come out and explain. They need to apologize. Secondly, they need to fulfill their promises and then some. Not only do they have to bring out the features that they promised, multiplayer, various other things, and fully tweak this game to really what it should be and could be, but they need to go above and beyond at this point. It simply isn't enough anymore for them to just release the things that they promised. When they come out with a content update, they have to shock, they have to wow, and they have to do something huge and productive to really bring that hype back up again. That's going to be a tough hill to climb. Not only that, but if they wish to continue development for the game again, they have to put out a, a clear roadmap of what they want the future of No Man's Sky to look like. And it has to be substantial, it has to be detailed, and it has to give folks something to look forward to. Winning that kind of trust and loyalty back isn't going to be easy. Developers like Square Enix for Final Fantasy XIV and EA DICE had a better time at this because they came out right away, took ownership of the problems, and they apologized, gave away they were going to fix it, and then they did that. Hello Games, they're not doing that right now, and it's hurting them. It's hurting them bad. People are selling their games and getting used amounts back for like three or four dollars. It's probably sitting in the bargain bin for folks that are actually interested in the game still. You could probably pick it up for pretty cheap in, in certain places like GameStop or wherever, eBay, who knows. But this is it. No Man's Sky, we have to call it a failure at this point. It's unfortunate. It's sad. I created a YouTube channel more than a year and a half ago that has this game to thank for that. And I'm still going to thank it for that. I'm going to eventually, here in the next couple of months, rebrand, move in a different direction, uh, while still keeping an ear to the ground for No Man's Sky and games like it. But folks, if you thought this was educational, if you thought this was, if you agree, if you don't agree, please let me know in the comments. Like, dislike, however you want. And thanks for watching. See you next time.